All right. I have a few here, but I'm going to start off just with the, the ones I use uh, pretty regularly. Uh, and that would be my chart styles. Now I have on the decision point live chart list, which you can get to if you go to the articles tab, decision point blog, you can get all of these charts. Uh, but one of the things, you know, I like to switch between the daily and the weekly and the monthly, you know, more quickly. Uh, let's go ahead and I'll pull up just a random chart here. So this is my daily. I went ahead and added the full quote. Uh, you can do that very easily down here, just a click, quick check. And the Zoom thumb, thumbnail, which I always include on my charts as well, it's just a button click, so not a hard thing. But what you'll notice is, of course, everybody seems to have their own uh, chart styles, what they like to do. And there's a couple of ways you can get, get these chart style, styles and save them. This is the row that talks about the chart styles right here. And you can obviously you can make all kinds of different ones. But if you go down to the bottom, we have some predefined uh, chart styles. So if you like in particular, for example, we just had John Murphy on here. And I do think this is the default. Uh, there you can get his chart style, uh, Tom's chart style. Do they have you on sunset still? They do. <laughs> That was your old chart style, but I know you still use this now and then. Uh, so anyway, that's where you can get to our chart styles pretty quickly if you want to just add those to your chart. So, you know, the typical, um, you know, EMAs and such are on mine. But once you get a chart style, you might want to get to it a little more quickly than having to scroll through this list. And so what you can do is you can see on this uh, side here, you can go ahead and set your default, what you want as your default chart style. So you'll just set up whatever you want. I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna mess up my default right now. Uh, but you can save it as a default. Uh, you can add new. That's how you would add your chart style names. But notice under here, we have button number. And so if you choose, you can have nine buttons and I'll just throw one in here and we'll just call it new chart style. The buttons are over here. And so you can quickly, once you have set them, just quickly punch through them. So I, there's my default. Uh, here is a market watcher's default. And now there's that new chart style I made as a default. And it's just in the button. If you just want to organize the buttons, uh, you can just click here. And now you've got uh, the ability to you know, delete them. Uh, move them around if you want one higher than the other, that sort of thing. Uh, and if you want to change and add a different one in here, uh, so let's say I want to add the candle glance one up in that menu, I can do that. I mess that up so you can't see it. Okay, so there you go. You can just drag it up here and, and that put that in there. I'm going to just move that one back down. And now I have those buttons exactly like I need them and want them. And since we're on the candle glance right now, uh, I'm sure some of you have noticed, uh, for example, let me just show you this. You've noticed that my candle glance is a little bit different on, um, on the, the market updates versus what I use on uh, the candle glances for, you know, when I do my uh, chart reviews for you. And so the way you can do this, and I, there's actually another little trick here, you can set it up the way you want, of course, for your candle glance. And that means that when you have a list like this, you can go in and say candle glance, and it'll be in that style for you. But what I've found uh, as well that I, I run into some of the time is that I want to use a couple different candle glances. So I've actually saved, uh, you know, a primary one, uh, my candle glance. This is a second secondary one that I'll use, uh, you know, things like that. I, I can just quickly uh, replace my the one that I have like that. And now that's going to be my candle glance from here on out. And then if I want to go back to my normal one, I can just go back here to my primary and then I just go ahead and replace with candle glance. So you could certainly do that for many different candle glances. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, let's see, just real quick. Uh, one of the ones I, that I wanted to show you was how to um, 
So we looked at the candle glands and the chart styles. I want to show you a few little uh, tips and tricks that we get questions out uh, about all the time. Number one is that you'll look at a chart in a blog and you just love it and you want to know how to save it or you want to know how to put certain um, individual indicators on them. Uh, so all you have to do is click it and then click the live version. And once you have it up here, if you go in and, and click the annotate button, just do a little bit of something so that it'll save it for you. Now you can choose where you wanna save it. So I can put this in, for example, my upgrades and downgrades. And now I have it in that chart list exactly the way I want. Plus I can come down here and see the different indicators and how those are set up. So I know I get a lot of it, for example, from my sentiment charts. People are interested, well, how do I get that chart? Uh, one way is to get it through the blogs. Another way um, is when you see those charts uh, in my blogs, click on them and then you can come down here and then you can find the different things. Other quick little thing before I move it to DOM, that little minus that goes before my parameters, that's how I quickly invert my charts and my scales. So I always talk about how I've inverted scales. That's a quick and dirty way to do it is just add a, a minus sign in front of the parameter uh, symbol. All right, Tom, I think I've covered plenty. I'm gonna let you take it over. All right, I'm gonna, go, gonna take a look at a couple of things here as well. First, I wanna show you an invisible chart. So here on the S&P 500, this is just the normal charts, five years going back and just showing the activity. Uh, and you can see the moving averages here um, as an overlay. But if I use the invisible chart, all of a sudden, all of that noise, all the data is gone and the only thing left are the moving averages. And you find the invisible under the type of chart. So here you've got candlesticks, line charts, whatever you want to use, histograms, Renko charts. Well, invisible is one of those options. And by displaying this on, at, in an invisible chart, you only get your overlays. Now, you might look at the market from a longer term perspective and you might say, hey, as long as the, this moving average is above that moving average, I'm going to stick with my positions. And this can kind of tell you without looking at anything going on in the S&P 500, as to whether or not you might want to get in, get out, or whatever. It just filters out the noise. So I like it uh, a couple of different times. Sometimes I use it with the volatility index. I've got an example here for you using it with the equity-only put-call ratio because this is a sentiment indicator. It tells us when the market's getting too fearful or you know maybe too greedy. And so key bottoms you can mark. I mean, if you look at the, the major spikes, this is a daily chart. So you're only seeing one major spike, but some of them do line up with some pretty important bottoms. But this thing looks like an EKG. It's like, I, I have no idea what's going on here. Well, if you use, and, and by the way, there's my 20 day and my 50 day moving average in the middle. I mean, this just tells me nothing really. So if I use the invisible chart though, and set my moving average to five days, I see a chart that looks something like this. And now take a look at these spikes. Uh, when I get these major spikes and look down to where these major spikes are occurring on the five-day moving average, every one of them almost lines up beautifully with these uh, major bottoms in the S&P 500. So this is a great way to use an invisible chart and then smooth it out. And you can custom this. So this is a five-day moving average. Maybe you want to use a three-day, maybe a 10-day, but you can go back and experiment. I think this is a really cool tool that uh, I don't see too many folks using on stock charts. And I think it's really powerful. Um, gives you an opportunity to really experiment with some things. Uh, and again, all you have to do is go down, set the invisible. And then under the simple moving average, I just put five in. So my chart becomes invisible. All of that data that I showed you over here all goes away. And the moving averages, everything goes away. I just put in that one five-day moving average and that's all that shows up here. So it really smooths it. And, you know, you might go back and say, well, you know, I, I want a 20 day and take a look at it there. And, you know, maybe that's something that's important, to you, but you can kind of play around with it. The only other thing I wanted to talk about here is I'm going to pull up a chart of Caterpillar. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of questions about, you know, why we don't talk about dividends and so forth. Well, a couple of things. You can pull up the full quote. And if you pull up the full quote, 
you can see over here your yield, your annual dividend and yield shows up here. But then also under your indicators, if you go down to dividends, and I'm going to go back uh, and go back. Uh, let's just uh, show this over the last 10 years for Caterpillar daily chart and update it with the dividends on the bottom. This tells you when the dividends changed. And you can see all the dividends have done on Caterpillar for the last 10 years is go up. This is the percentage um, paid each each quarter. And you can see for a few years it stayed the same and then they had a raise. Just a great way to go back and take a look.